Hello students in Advanced Pathophysiology. In week one, we learned about the major cellular structures and their functions, particularly about the organelles. Nucleus contains all the genetic information, DNA. DNA which contains nuclear genes that code for the synthesis of proteins. Nucle nucleolus, uh, they produce ribosomal RNA. Ribosomes aid in protein production. This process is directed by the nucleus. Ribosomes are known as the protein factories of the cells. Different types of cells produce different kinds of proteins. For example, ribosomes in pancreatic beta islet cells synthesize the, pro the proteins that make up insulin. This inability results in type 1 diabetes mellitus. Plasma membrane protects internal cell contents from the external environment. They transport nutrients and waste products. They generate membrane potentials and provide cell rec recognition, communication, and growth regulation. We learned about cytoskeleton. These may, are made up of actin and microtubules and intermediate filaments. These regulates the cell shape, movement, and the trafficking of intracellular molecules. Endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus function together to synthesize proteins and lipids for transport to lysosomes or the plasma membrane. Lysosomes and perioxisomes are membrane-bound bags of digestive enzymes that degrade intracellular debris. Mitochondria are the cell's energy producers. Cell types differ in their number of mitochondria according to their energy needs. For example, muscle cells have abundant number, numbers of mitochondria because they require a high amount of energy to function, whereas bones cells um, have um, fewer mitochondria. The mitochondria primary function is to convert organic nutrients into cellular energy in the form of ATP. This is accomplished through the process of aerobic metabolism, which requires oxygen. When no oxygen is available for cells, as in cellular hypoxia, anaerobic uh, metabolisms use, uses um, glucose to create energy. How do our cells acquire and use energy? Cells acquire energy through catabolism, the energy releasing breakdown of nutrient, nutrient sources to, to provide ATP to the cell. Cells use energy in the form of ATP. Each cell must continuously synthesize its ATP to meet its energy needs. ATP is synthesized primarily from the breakdown of glycogen and fat through glycolysis, the uh, uh, citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. We learned how substances are transported across the cell membrane. Our cell membrane consists of phospholipids bilayer with polar components facing the outside and a lipid core made up of fatty acids and cholesterol. This membrane is 
hydrophobic. That means fear of water. So the hydro, uh, hydrophobic barrier between the intracellular and extra, extracellular. The membrane's lipid barrier uh, allows the movement of small non-polar substances such as oxygen and carbon dioxide between extracellular and intracellular fluid. But most other molecules require transporters. Large lipids insoluble molecules are transported across the plasma membrane by endocytosis and exocytosis. Small lipid insoluble molecules are transported across the plasma membrane by three kinds of membrane proteins. And these are ATP driven pumps, carriers, and channels. Active transport by the sodium potassium pump generates and maintains the characteristic ionic components of extracellular fluid. So in the extracellular fluid you'll find low uh, potassium and high sodium and intracellular fluid where you'll find high in potassium and low in sodium. Cellular growth control under normal mechanisms. We have the somatic cells. These cells they divide by mitosis in which two daughter cells each receive an identical and complete set of 46 chromosomes. So the somatic cells are cells in your body other than the germ cells like the eggs and sperm. The germ cells such as eggs and sperm, they divide by meiosis where significant chromosomal, chromosomal um, rearrangements occur. Cell replication typically requires specific extracellular mitogens. And uh, these mitogens are actually, it's a peptide or a small uh, protein that induces a cell to begin cell division uh, like mitosis. So the cell replication typically requires the extracellular mitogens that activate signaling system within the cell. Cyclin D proteins and uh, cyclin dependent kinase. Now these are protein proteins involved in cell cycle control. So these are uh, cyclin D protein and cyclin uh, dependent kinases alter the function of the regulatory proteins. That is the RB protein or they are called PRB which stands for um, retinoblastoma protein. So the RB protein causing it to release um, tra transcription factors that begin the process of replication and allows the cell to continue through G1. Multiple checkpoints are present within the cell cycle to ensure the cell undergoes division appropriately. Progression through a G1 checkpoint, also known as the restriction points, provides the presence of necessary growth conditions and, um, and commits the cell to the remainder of the division process. PRB can stop the cell uh, cycle in G1. Therefore, the consequence of losing this function as a tumor suppressor gene, we have common findings of um, P, 
uh, of RB1 mutations in retinoblastoma, osteosarcoma, and um, carcinomas of the breast, lungs, and um, colon. The importance of cell death programs such as apoptosis is essential during prenatal development to achieve the proper shape, uh, particularly of the digits. After birth, apoptosis is critical in immune cell development. Cells maturing in the thymus are assessed for their reactivity. Lymphocytes that can react to self-antigens um, are killed by apoptosis. Cells that have sustained damage, whether due to aging, infection, or um, injury, and are unsuccessful in attempts at repair, tend to undergo apoptosis or autophagy in a controlled manner that reduces the inflammation that occurs in necrosis. The difference between ne necrosis and apoptosis. Necrosis or pathological cell death is usually a consequence of disruption, disrupted blood supply. It can um, result in local and systemic symptoms including pain, trauma, fulminating infection, inflammation, and loss of function. Necrosis is associated with cell rupture and pouring of damaging enzymes into the tissues as well as the initiation of acute inflammation. Apoptosis is an organized process that eliminates unnecessary or damaged cells without causing inflammation or any adverse effects on surrounding tissues. Differentiate between the um, reversible and irreversible cellular injuries. These are differentiated by the cell's ability to adapt or repair. In reversible injuries, cellular swelling and the accumulation of excess substances within the cell typically resolve when the causative um, functions uh, factors sorry factors are removed as the cell adapts to persistent stress atrophy hypertrophy hyperplasia metaplasia and dysplasia may occur, which are potentially reversible when the cellular stress is relieved. However, when the injury is too severe or prolonged to allow cellular adaptation or repair, irreversible cellular injuries cause, injuries cause pathologic cell death, necrosis, and apoptosis. Differentiation in the process, is, I'm sorry, differ, differentiation is the process whereby newly growing cells acquire the specialized structure and function of the cells that are replaced. This finding is indicative of benign growth. Neoplastic cells can appear very different from healthy cells within their tissue of origin. Poorly differentiated cells are indicative of malignancy. Necrotic cell death occurs when cell die when cells die when stressors or insults overwhelm their ability to survive. Necrosis is an irreversible process where the cells undergo a series of changes include, including membrane disintegration, 
chromatin fragmentation, lysosomal activation, and lysis. Acute ischemia, as seen in myocardial infarction and stroke, causes the death of cells at the heart of the ischemic region, with some sparing of cells on the border that may receive blood flow from nearby collateral vessels. The cell accumulates sodium, causing it to swell and burst. Lysosomes burst, re releasing uh, degradative enzymes that start to uh, digest the tissue. Loss of cell uh, calcium homostasis allows calcium to build up and activate calcium-dependent degradative enzymes, including proteases that digest proteins, phospholipase that destroy membranes, and nucleases that destroy nucleic acid. Mitochondria and ribosomes seize normal function. Damage signals attract macrophages and neutrophils, creating an inflammatory focus. And that concludes uh, week one. That's a highlight of week one. Thank you so much for listening. I hope it helps.